The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this uh, very uh, powerful move to the upside day after a sharp decline yesterday. Uh, thank you to our host. Let's keep that standard up here. We're looking at the Dow up at 127 at 21,437. Looking at the S&P up 17 at 2436. The comp index is up. 51 at 61.98. The VIX index actually is down 74 cents at 10.32. A couple of things going on here. Just before we go on, I want you to quickly show in the Chapman Wave methodology some of the things that we're looking at. Within the two minute chart here on the right, you will see that we've gone to a peak E and the MACD is just turning down stochastics, just gone below 80% to 77%. So that's suggesting that the upside could be a little bit limited here. If you're looking at the 10-minute chart, you've got a cup formation. And that cup formation started yesterday during my show when it made that double top, peak C1, C2 at 2437 round number, made it a few times, and then started on its way down. If you're looking at a left side, right side price time match, you've got until... 11.20 to try to hit that level of 24.37. So far, the high is 24.36.25. I would say that having plunged to 24.13.75, that is a pretty accurate cup formation. And I think now we're looking at a, a little bit of a tiredness uh, as the MACD is still good in the 10-minute chart and the stochastics at 82%, but suggesting that at this particular point, there's a digestive phase that should unfold uh, maybe for a good chunk of this show. And then we'll, so I just wanted to get through that because I know some of you look at the charts on a very short term basis. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, no, I didn't go short right there doing the show. I find it very difficult to do. Uh, it's unlike Tom's show that he did with Tommy just now. Great show where they, they're using the uh, Nadex platform and all that. Uh, and that's part of the show. This is not part of the show. We're looking at uh, using different techniques. Now, talking about techniques, what I wanted to say is when I was interviewed uh, with Tom at the 3.20 hour yesterday afternoon, we were right here. We were in this candle. And I said, this candle looks very much like a Chapman Wave um, Roman candle. And that for my subscribers, I said, this is a, a big cautionary sign was up for the day. And that my anticipation was that we could be pulling back. But... To get Chapman Wave 5 and a leg D to the downside, the Dow had to take out 21.33 in the 120-minute in the chart. And that the stochastic in MACD was still very negative. And that when you get this kind of candle, this um, what I call a Chapman Wave Roman candle, it's at the top, within two or three bars of a top, doesn't matter on the time frame, uh, then there's a chance that if you go into the wick of that bar and, and cover half of that wick, there's a real good chance you're going to go to the bottom and take out the low. When it occurs at a bottom, and in this case, the bottom only because the 2161 low of uh, early June uh, was the takeoff phase, uh, and that made, meant that we were closer to the lows, it meant that you had to close above that whole candle. Instead, what happened is we went for the last... 15, 20 minutes of the show yesterday, of the trading day, going to the 4 o'clock hour, we went into the, into the Roman candle wick and then plunged right through it, took out the 21.33 low that was made at 11.30 during my show on the 21st of June and um, started leg D down. Chapman Wave 5, this is the technique I've been working on for the last two and a half years, is starting to work extremely well, um, except there are times where I have to move it over, uh, three or, or four or five. Um, but for the actual turns, the signals have been very good. And most importantly, what we're looking at here is that this very powerful move is 
there are a couple of things end of the month uh, buying uh, I'd say to subscribers watch out we should get a balance chapter number five has been accomplished I don't recall if I actually said that but when you close at the low remember look you close at the low right in that candle of the mm, what is that that's at 3 30 in the afternoon on the 21st and the next day you started that big move to the upside and spiral to uh, yesterday's intraday high of 21506 so these things work uh, a majority of the time and what we're really looking at now is that this should be either an arch formation it could go a little higher but the MACD and stochastic are very weak although they're trying to turn around right here I'm considering that the pattern that we've uh, seen that puts us into a sell mode now let me go to the daily chart because this all this all ties in with what we're looking at Oops. The daily chart right here says that we've gone to a three. This is probably a leg four to the upside in the chat wave. Let me type in the four, make it pink, nice and big and pink. There we go, pink. Make it uh, size will be font, font 18. There we go. And that's almost done. And then we should start heading towards the nine period, two on, sorry. The 20 period red moving average in the daily chart, which is at 21,304. What we're doing is we're using up time in a sideways consolidation. Yes, the SMHs that I've been harping about for a while, saying they are very weak, um, still remain very weak. Uh, we're looking at that rotational strength, the IBB, which is the, the harbinger of of safety for uh, fund managers trying to play a counter trend rally it had a little bit of a bounce it's up at two and a half but my thinking here is that we've got lower lows and lower highs to come but we haven't yet hit a bear market now the bear phase and this is what I've been talking about for oh for so long and what I said to subscribers this is just the start this is a consolidation a bear phase would have us close down sharply yesterday have the futures open sharply lower, have this counter trend bounce interrupted intraday with a, with a sell off, and then close the day very sharply lower, and then repeat the same process uh, the next day. That's bear, that's bear market. And then you'd have a theme, you'd have a, a, a media, let's call it a media theme that constantly says um, no tax cuts, whatever it is. Um, market doesn't like it just over and over market doesn't like it um, and negative 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 we don't have that right now <clears throat> we are getting into a phase where they could happen haven't got it all right let's continue <clears throat> e-mini has gone from a lower low today so far to a lower high than yesterday that was at 2437 actually 0.25 <clears throat> is the high that we've got to look at we're very close to four three sixes uh we could get there quite easily but look at the look at the weekly chart holding the nine period moving average not a bad candle but it is making a d if there's no new high this week about 24.51 i'll be right back want to show this two minute chart trying to rally i'm looking at the s p cash and i think the s p cash needs to go to a leg d I wonder if we can get that quickly while we're going to the break. Yep, that needs to Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Back, and now what we're looking at, we've got a couple of really good questions. Um, we'll go to KRE Spider SP Regional Bank in a moment and the XLF, just a, a bunch of questions about the financials. Good, good, good questions. Let me just finish here. I wanted to say that gold trading up 3.71, uh, 3.7, um, at 12.50. We've had a lot of conflicting and unusual situations lately, and this is one of them. And why do I say unusual? Because it, let's face it, to have the opportunity, we've seen it before where the dollar was pulling back and gold did rally, but it didn't rally as strongly as it should. But it did rally. This is a little different. Look, the dollar's broken down below support, key support. It's at 96 right now. The candle that I'd be looking at for the next support level is just a little lower at 95.89. That was the candle of uh, November. You remember November, we had the big turnaround. Um, there was also, I think it was maybe uh, some people remember that there, there was actually an election very early in November. Well, um, December uh, saw a rally going up. And then uh, in the monthly chart, let me just show you here. So December, it went up. In January, it went to 103.82. And then it made a leg D and a peak D. And what it's done is every single month, it's been challenging the nine period moving average as either support and now resistance and that's at 98.26 and that's suggesting that a chunk of the 2016 rally has come down in not as quick a time as it went up until it gets to the low of 94.08 that was made in august and then whatever one two three four five month up move and a one two three four this is the fifth month so there'll be a match but at this particular point, what we're really looking at is that the euro, EU or USD, has spiked. And I, I do have to call it now, in fact, I have to change the arrow. That arrow is a peak E right there, May of 2017, May 23rd. Um, then it comes back down. I have to now call that, oh, yes, call that the low. And it's in a stair step spike consolidate, spike, consolidate, move to the upside. I'm calling this a brand new leg C in the euro. 
and a leg E in the weekly chart. And the euro is actually looking strong and suggesting that the dollar really has a problem. That makes it so intriguing to see that gold is only up three. The GDX actually had a horrible candle yesterday, trying to repair that a little bit today. I don't see anything in it at this particular point. Now, these things move very quickly. That's why I've been saying the last couple of weeks have been very important for inflection and deflection uh, uh, focal, focal points. What we're looking at here is unless the GDX, and let's just go to gold, uh, let's go to um, gold core, nothing there. Let's go to gold, G-O-L-D, um, that's Rand gold. Sitting in the 200 period moving average, let's look at ASA, one of my favorites, just as I, I ne we never use it as a, hardly ever use it as a trade, but we use it as a, a signal, like I use GE in the Dow for the last 20, 30 years, um, as a Dow component and a very good indicator. In fact, what's GE doing today? GE's up four cents. That shows you that's, that, as I said this morning to subscribers, it says that there could be a bit of a rally. This is not a bit of a rally. This is a big rally in the market. And look at this. ASA went down to 11.40, and now it's back at 11.79, where it was yesterday. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, not yet. But there's a chance that gold will become a play and it could happen within the next day or two. This is kind of a testing basing area, and there's nothing there yet, but it's attempting to form some kind of a base. So what I can say is nothing yet. I debated with myself this morning whether we should start to include some gold stocks. I'm holding off right now, but I, I'm looking at some that have done quite nicely, and they are saying, hey, uh, we might be in play if certain things happen by the end of the day or tomorrow. Okay, so now let's go. And silver was acting a little bit better. Yep, it's gone to a leg A and um, looking a little better than gold. I think that's important. That suggests that the MACD could turn up and the stochastic at 24% is rallying with the price. The weekly chart still looks lousy. <laughs> Mixed signals. High-grade copper I want to do quickly. High-grade copper. Oh, again, another good day. Completely forgot about it. Did you not write it down? They write copper. Sounds like the English, uh, the English trade. Coppers, watch out for them, coppers. Okay, so we've got an A, B. Yeah, very nice uh, copper action. Yeah, not great in the weekly, but improving. So that's a good harbinger of some sign. IYT, just real quickly. IYT, new, uh, trying to make a new recovery high. Good action. And that, that's the reason why I'm saying I don't see crash. I see consolidation, rotational consolidation as I'm looking at it. Some of the sectors, some of the stocks and sectors looking very weak. And others are really, I mean, we have a, we have a particular stock in the water products area doing beautifully here. It's a low price stock just under the radar at this particular point. I'm expecting, it's just not, it's not a leg D. Oh, shouldn't have said a word. <laughs> it's a leg D. We'll see what happens after this. Um, okay. So that was that. And crude oil. Crude oil came back after dipping earlier. Nice. One, two, three, four, five candles. Oh, yeah, five candles. Hasn't gone, the nice percentage gain, 42.10 area to the 44.62 over the last week and a half. Um, I'm suggesting, and now, now I can get to the questions. What about crude oil? Well, I said yesterday, if you want to nibble on crude oil, the USO is a good way to do it. Um, and let's see if it can go a little higher because it had to tackle and break above the 19th of June high of 9.30. And right now, the high so far is 9.22. I think it's acting quite well. I do consider it a, cons a, a counter trend rally. Okay, and as a counter trend rally, you, could, you can't go full, fully into it. You've got to sort of step in and make fairly tight stops because it could reverse at any point. Now, inventory, I think, was high, and it's gone higher today. So this is a good sign. It says something's going on in the oil market that is, at least for now, positive. I'd like to go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? I'm doing well, Basil. How about you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm pleased summer is coming right in here, and that's good. That's one of the main reasons I was calling you to just wish you a great summer. Uh, I probably won't be calling in too much. I'm going to take the summer off personally. And then oh, that's other great. Things, other things to focus on. I did this one. I called you quickly about uh, CBI. We t talked about it. Now it's been probably a couple, two, three weeks ago. And I had a trade in that, which I did okay on. Not so good the first time, but then I bought in last week, and I had the big spike up. 
yesterday, and I got out today, but I just wanted you to take a look at that, see what you thought. You know, I, since since you had mentioned it, and I, it's one of those stocks that, you know, you have some stock, I have a bunch of them, that I always forget to look at as a consistent, uh, uh, in a consistent way, but I look at them consistently over over the year. And every time I look, I say, oh, no, I should have this, I should have that. This is one of those that was just dormant. Chicago Bridge and Iron uh, trading at 20.43 right now, up 40 cents. And it was just a horrible stock. It went all the way from the 35 area down to the, uh, the 13s. And all of a sudden, it's up seven points in a week and a half. Hey, first of all, congratulations on the trade and getting out because it's pulling back. I think it's worth looking at it because of the monthly charge. So we'll be back with Brent in East California. Guys, up 140 S&P, up 1850. Be right here. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So here we go. We're looking at the C CBI, which is the Chicago Bridge and Iron uh, trading at 20.62. So, Brent, first of all, you're out. You're completely out of trade. Sometimes you take off your options, but you keep the uh, core position as a trade, the, the shares, but you, this time you're out altogether? I did. I sold out. Uh, okay. So now let's talk about it theoretically. What I'm looking at is that the move yesterday, now I'm not sure. Now I had a, a couple of email, quite a few emails here, but at least two of them are referring to the Trump trades, Caterpillar, etc. <clears throat> is this a Chicago Bridge and Iron? Is this a Trump trade? Well, I suspect that uh, companies that were called one thing decades and decades ago 
morph into something else. And I suspect <clears throat> Chicago Bridge and Iron still has pretty much that as a basis. I'm not sure what the percentage is, but I suspect that it's part of the the um, the actual physical side of looking at repairs in all the different states, etc. I suspect that something was not right for the for the period that we were looking in starting well for quite a while but certainly the period from march until now and then maybe there's some news it looks to me a little bit like it is um more news related than actually uh part of their profit margins because this this looks to me like they're just not making as much money that's really what it looks like so I'm going to say to you that if keep an eye on it, and since you're going to be taking it easy on, on your trades, don't don't just ignore these things. Every once in a while, just put in a maybe I don't know if you've got a, some kind of a reminder, but if if it comes back to the 16 1671 is the nine period moving average, so that's almost a, a four point pullback. But if it comes back to 18 point, let's call it 1820. To 17, give it a little room, 1750, somewhere in that area. And in what's today? Is Wednesday? A Wednesday a week. In other words, a week from today, if it hasn't actually broken that support, it's called it $17.50 support. I think this is one that I really would like to look at because that could be telling us that yes, there could be some business coming their way. Um, it wasn't just a news related event, there are some follow through results. And therefore, Chicago Bridge and Iron is in in play. But if it takes out, certainly if it takes out 16.72 by within the next five trading days, going to Wednesday of next week, oh, it will be four trading days. Then I'm I would say to you, no, 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 this is just a bounce. But I'm looking at the monthly chart and that's starting to improve technically. So this came in as a propitious moment, and um, in the weekly chart helped. But the monthly chart is the one that's really benefiting because the uh, MACD is sort of flattening out and the stochastic is much higher now at 23 percent than it was way down. Uh, let me see down at the 9 percent area back in September of last year. So there's a technical improvement. And I'm thinking I'm going to actually make a note right now before I forget CBI Wednesday. July, what is that? Fifth or what, sixth or whatever it is. Um, yes. So I'm going to keep it in uh, keep in mind. But congratulations, Esther. That was a really nice percentage trade you've got there. So uh, that's that's a couple of weeks worth of work right there. <laughs> yes, it was. All right. I really appreciate it, Basil. Have a great summer. And, and you uh, too. And and uh, look forward to hearing from you at the end of the summer. And in the meantime, just enjoy yourself. Have a lovely time. Are right, you too? Take care, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. Right. Always right, appreciate it. Brenton Martinez, California. And 20.51 right now is towards the low of the day on CBI. Now, a couple of questions. Let's go to it right now. The XLF, I held off only because my suspicion was that, how can I do this? Oh, let me go step by step. TLT um, had a sharp pullback from peak G slash C, but I did call it a Chapman Wave 5. And that's where you got to become a little bit cautious. And if I was looking at the TBT, which is the inverse, it went to a trough F right there. I thought I typed it in. I guess not. And it's had a nice spike to the upside. The stochastic has turned around. Still only 16%, but the MACD is crossed positive. And the histogram is slightly positive for the first time. So I'm going to call this a gray A in the TBT. It's in legs, C to the downside. The MACD and stochastic are really not that strong uh, in the weekly chart. The monthly chart doesn't look great. Now I'm going to go back to the TLT. I'm going to talk about it in terms of where it is right now, down 29 cents at 126.60. What I said to subscribers this morning, that we're going to watch it to see the support, and the support is at 125. I think I put, what did I write? TLT, TLT, uh, number on my list every day. This is number... 12 out of 19. So number 12 TLT. Yeah, let me just see. 
soul strength internally. Oh, I guess I was running out of time. I didn't have a chance to write it, but I was in a type in that it must hold. I, I think I said yesterday. It must hold this trend line support. And that trend line support, I said yesterday was at 126.20. Today is at 126.06. It went right down to 126. No, it went to 125.98, and now it's rebounding, trying to get to the 126.95, nine-period exponential moving average. Now, why am I spending time on yields? Because we know that yields, um, for the traditional way of thinking at the bank stocks, the financials, it's a very important component in the thinking of fund managers. However, <clears throat> when I go to my <laughs> triple yield chart, you'll see that the the the... the the axiom I use of lower lows and lower highs has been co has been continuously in progress, except for the last two weeks. The low that was made uh, three weeks ago in the ten year and the five year, the brown, the cyan color, that's the ten year and top year, and five year here, has seen higher lows and higher highs. So there's a change. What I am looking at is that the Pattern is suggesting there could be a rally, but the rally is going to only last a little bit longer. And then it could go sideways to down. That's my thinking. Now I can go to what I was looking at before. I'm also going to include the home builders, Philadelphia housing sector, which so far <coughs> is in leg F to the upside at 28632. And is having a nice rebound today, 285.25. And that is suggesting that we've got until Friday to make a new high. But the yields, the, the rates, are going to be impactful in the housing market. I wanted to show that because they, I'm try, trying to tie them all together. Now we can go to the, um, to the XLF and the KRE. In the XLF, this is... Buyers are suggesting that they like the action in the T in the XLF. It's up 35 cents, up 1.45% at 2449. I think it's a big part of the rally we're seeing. And what I'm really looking at here is that within the context of the weekly chart. That nine period moving average that it's been walking since it broke above the week of the 9th of June, 2326 was the low, 2433 was the high, is in play as key support. I like it. I'll be back as well. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Will interest rates continue to rise? For bold trades on U.S. Treasuries, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade TMF or TMV. Directions daily, 20 plus year, bull and bear, three times ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. So we're back and we're looking at the, uh, even as we were speaking, the XLF went high, it went to uh, 2450. <coughs> I like it. So I, I recommended uh, Peaky in the Den and asked about KRE. And KRE is, KRE is the regional banks. It isn't quite as positive a chart formation, but the monthly is only at a peak B <clears throat> and it should go to a C and a D. And I, I and he likes to look at the long term. He's prepared to um, hold it for a while. So I'm saying yes, you could start a position in the KRE, and the XLF is looking good. Um, yeah, could, it could fail at a double top, but I think that uh, some position in that is makes sense. Now let me just go to the questions that I had. Uh, the v, a v, which is a visa, acting quite nicely here. Um, Holding well in the weekly chart. How much further? I, I don't know how much further it's got on the upside based on the weekly, but it is acting well. MasterCard, you remember we did this yesterday, wasn't acting as well, but today it's quite good. It's up one. Goldman Sachs, part of uh, part of our roster of the Dow. Really, it's, it's lagging. I think Goldman Sachs has to wait. I think Goldman, towards the September period, that's where I think it really catches a light and it really starts to move higher. So that's what I'm looking at there. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, whoops, did I lose it? No, it's right there. Oh, American Express. You remember that's the one that surprised me? It was just moving higher and higher and higher. Leg E. This is that worm pattern that just like it climbs up the, the, the branch of a tree. Small little candles, but everyone's green just about. Very nice action. I think it's getting a little toppy um, at 84.11. So it's looking fabulous. It looks right now fabulous, but it's suggesting just a couple of hints and says getting a little toppy. Wouldn't be surprised if 84.09, it's, it stops at about 85 or maybe just under 85, and then it trades sideways, but it has fabulous support between here and 81. So that could be a consolidation that we're looking at. But right now, all I can say is it looks great. Um, uh, just I personally in leg E to the upside, I'd be a little cautious jumping in. Um, so uh, what have I what have I forgotten? Um, I'll put in Bank of America. It's not in the Dow anymore. Uh, T R V. No. What was the? Why am I missing one? Oh, J P Morgan, of course. So Bank of America. Yeah, nice candle, doing well. Sideways to slightly higher now. Uh, looking at JP Morgan, remember yesterday I looked at it and said that looks fabulous. JPM, not JM, JPM, JP Morgan. Yeah, leg D. Um, but the weekly chart is still very strong. So I, I think the bank stocks are getting a little toppy here. Um, so the, all I can say is make it real simple. 
the TLT, if it manages to break into the 127.50s to 120, 127.50s by tomorrow or Friday, I would suggest to you that yields are going to be in a trading band with the chances uh, strengthening that the TLT could get to that 129 area. And if there's a, there's a tumble and it takes out 125 support, then it's all over. Yields are going to go higher for the intermediate term, uh, short to intermediate term. Just make it simple. And that, of course, is where the banks will do very well. Is that what the banks are saying right now? I'm not sure. So the next question was Caterpillar. Yep, Caterpillar is, um, yeah, it's the same. it looks like a bank stock actually right now. It's holding well. I think that it's getting close to some kind of a consolidation. It's in a consolidation. In fact, I would normally do this because it's a very obvious oval pattern to me. But it's one of those oval patterns that says, watch out, because the oval could be favoring the upper part of the arch formation, not the cup, and that it could be rotating, uh, I'm sorry, rolling over at a peak F top. Oh, no, no, this is not. This is not a Chapman Wave um, stalk leg formation because this took out this left side low. The low of 102.45 back on the 7th was pierced uh, four days ago at 102.30. And that says, no, you, you're more looking at, you're looking more at an arch formation. And that says, no, uh, Caterpillar is in a stall at this particular point. Oh, okay. So that's the next question was, uh, or is, uh, I've got, oh, XPO. X, oh, isn't the XPO what we looked at the other day? And then I completely forgot about it. It looked good. Um, yeah, XPO is in leg E in the weekly chart, in the monthly chart. This is XPO Logistics. Is that what you said, XPO? How did that get into there? Oh, Trucking Warehouse Logistics. Yes, very good. Okay, so I never finished my work on this, but it is acting extremely well. I'm going to do this live right now. What's the time? Yep, i got time. There's the low back in, Jan um, in January, February of 2016. Here we go. Nah, I got covered up, so I have to check it out. Uh, 2471, 2438, I thought so. That's leg A, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Start again. A, double top, double top. B, C, D. And this is A, E slash B, F slash C, and everything about it says it's more like a C. Weekly chart of XPO Logistics is very strong. And building strength, it looks fabulous. I that's the weekly chart. The daily chart was looking poor yesterday. <laughs> Suddenly come alive again. This looks to me like that's an A. That's a B. That's a C. There's your D. There's your A. There's your B. There's your C. There's your D. There's your E. And then it looks like whoops, double top. But all of a sudden you've got this leg. I'm calling this leg F for now. And that's all I can say. So I think a little toppy, would I buy it now? No, I'd keep it on my list to say, hmm, very good looking stock. Could it pull back, have a digestive phase from 6343 up 259 right now? Yeah, that's very strong. I, I'm not going to fight that. That's very good action. But the pattern that it makes is the arch, successful arch, breakout, successful arch, right? Like a stair step move, arch, breakout, another arch and a breakout. I. I like it. Uh, what is the question? Uh, SSF. Uh, no, that isn't it. And JBHT. Uh, okay, and transportation index. All right. So I like it. It's acting very well. I think it's a little toppy on the shorter term, and I would love to see it pull back from. Oh, it's already just done that. 61, 64, almost 63 and a half. Yeah, I'd like to see a consolidation. I'm going to put another oval pattern in here like that. It's really like a, a, a triangle. But I'm going to make it an oval pattern for now. Say, so, hey, I'm just going to watch it. It's in a range, and I would love to look at it. Just remind me, please, uh, Sarah, give me, give me another email. If you can see this in the next two weeks and it pulls back under 60, I want to watch it. Is it going to go to a short-term sell, to an intermediate-term sell? Was it just going sideways for another big move later on? The weekly chart is big move later on. So XPO, good. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Write it down. XPO. I've got to remember to look at this. It's all very well writing it down. Okay. 
Now what we're looking at here, just let me get back to this for a second. I want you to show you the S&P has almost gone to the 2438.83 level. I'm sorry, 2438.66 level. 24.61. It's got six cents to go, and then it makes that leg D in the five-minute chart. That's what we were waiting for. I'll be there's the cash. I'll be back. That's a chapman. Tiger Ignition's our huge move. Up 148. I must talk about this. Up 20 in the SP. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. So the left side, right side price time match says that the 10-minute chart actually went above the high uh 11:30 yesterday yesterday this is a, an amazing thing you've gone from 2437s down to 2413 back to 2437s in a matter of 24 hours very unusual small trading range if you're looking at it historically huge trading range intraday ha huh. so now let's continue so the xpo was uh, uh, looking quite good um so uh, let's just go back to the IYT, which is the iShares. Yeah, is this a brand new leg B? I mean, just for now, I'm going to call it F slash B. In the daily, leg A, leg B, gray B in the weekly. And it looks like it wants to test 173.88. It's at 171.40 right now. That was the high back in March. That'll start leg D. D, it's so only... One of the few of the major indexes that has not gone to at least a D in the monthly chart is the IYT. And because 
crude oil was pulling back, has been pulling back. Maybe it wants to go to 171, no, 173.89 to start leg D. Uh, whoa, that's that's kind of far away, huh? All right, well, let's go one step at a time. Let's go to the Dow, I-N-D-U. This candle is a very strong candle. I, by the end of the day, anything can happen. I just don't see that it's going to reverse 100 points to the downside. So it's 100 points down, so this still closes up about 50 or 60. But so far, this is really a good candle. And on a weekly basis, middle of the week, uh, getting close to the 21,535, I have to treat this. This is what I would normally do. I immediately go and I put in my Chapway Falling Axe Formation. There it is. There's the bottom. And what does it say? It says that we are very close to the resistance level, which should be between right here, the high that was made, and 21,480s. Why? For two reasons. In the daily chart, a punch above a 21,506.21, the high of yesterday, would suggest a really, really good chance of hitting 21,535, the all time high, <clears throat> which would negate the chapter wave one, two, three, four, going to a five down, and that would be in the 21,310s area, 21,300. Good, strong candle, and um, the 120-minute chart is in, oh, look at this, i got to keep moving this A, and there it is. I drew it already in the 120-minute chart. That's the level. I'll give you the exact number to look at. A close in, on any 120-minute bar, a close of that bar above 21,490 would suggest we're going to be retesting the highs. So right here, what have we done? We've gone to well, what's the time? Yep, we're running out of time. So we've gone in the hundred in the S and P cash. It's gone to leg D, and the MACD isn't as strong as it was, and the stochastic is good at, but it's at eighty-seven percent less than it was at peak C. Watch closely. A push into the twenty-four forty-one to twenty-four forty-two area in the in the in the cash. S&P would be very good. And at any point during the day, a uh, pushing below 24.3675 24.3675 would suggest that the intraday high has been made and that it should have a digestive phase into the close. That doesn't mean negative. So far, let me put it in perspective, a fabulous move, counter trend bounce. I'm calling it at this particular point in the shorter term. One of the reasons we took profits in some of the short positions is I just didn't want to hang out here because I did have a bounce. This is more than a bounce. And the XLF is participating. So the close today is going to be really important. Have a great day. Check out my opening call, and I'll be back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.